Hi, fourth grade. This is Miss Rambo. I'm bringing you your Studies Weekly Week 26 Nature's Bounty article of the day. Today, we actually have two articles we're going to look at. We're going to be looking at Take a Covered Bridge Tour and Why Were Pennsylvania's Bridges Covered? So we're going to start out by watching our video. We have a bonus source with a video to learn more about Lancaster County. Lancaster, about 70 miles west of Philadelphia along the Susquehanna River, is one of the oldest inland cities in the entire United States. It was settled in 1709 by German immigrants who came to America looking for religious freedom, and within 20 years the city had been mapped out with streets, building lots, and farmland. John Wright, one of the most respected citizens, named the Lancaster after the English city of the same name where he once lived. Lancaster has a unique claim to historic fame. It was the capital of the 13 colonies for one day in September of 1777 when British soldiers were marching to Philadelphia and the Continental Congress left and reconvened in Lancaster. They worked there for a single day before leaving again. Today, Lancaster is a beautiful mid-sized city full of historic sites. The city has worked very hard to preserve and rebuild its old buildings, such as the Trinity Lutheran Church, which was built in 1766, and the Fulton Opera House, which was built in 1852, and is the oldest theater in continuous use in America. The Benjamin Mishler House is another interesting sight to see. Someone once bet Benjamin that he couldn't build a house in one day, so to prove that person wrong, he did it. And the house he built in only 10 hours still stands in Lancaster, one of Pennsylvania's most historic and beautiful cities. Whenever they were talking about Lancaster in the first Continental Congress or the Continental Congress going to Lancaster to have a meeting there, did anyone else think of our debate in ELA? Because I did. I was thinking about how we brought history to life when we did our second Continental Congress uh, debate together. So it's really interesting to see social studies connecting to things we're doing in ELA as well. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to read our um, article, Take a Covered Bridge Tour. We have four photographs here of different bridges throughout Lancaster County, and they're going to connect to the list up here. Let's get started. Most visitors to Pennsylvania can hardly wait to take a driving tour of our wooden bridges. The most popular area is Lancaster County. See if you can coax your family to jump in the car and take off this weekend for a tour of our wonderful covered bridges. One, Pinetown Bridge, Lancaster County, 133 feet long, built in 1867. Bridge number two. This is Sporting Hill Bridge in Lancaster County, 96 feet long, built in 1874. Bridge three is Landis Mill Bridge, in Lancaster County here. It is 53 feet long and built in 1873. And our fourth photograph, our fourth bridge, that bridge is called Kurtz Mill Bridge in Lancaster County. It is 94 feet long and built in 1876. These are not the only bridges in covered bridges in Pennsylvania, we have a lot more, and there are a lot more in Lancaster County, but other counties throughout the state. Questions to go along with our photographs. Lancaster County is the most popular place to see wooden bridges, wooden carriages, old fashioned cars, old barns. Well, kind of know the answer is wooden bridges because that's what we've been talking we've been talking about. But let's go up and make sure. Right here is Lancaster County. I'm going to look around those sentences to see right here, wooden bridges, I found our answer. I'm, I'm making sure I have that evidence to know that that's correct. Question number two, the longest wooden bridge in Lancaster County is Pine Town Bridge, Kurtz Mill Bridge, Sporting Hill Bridge, or Landis Mill Bridge. Let's go up to the top and see, we're looking at the feet, which one is the longest? Look right here, 133, that is Pine Town Bridge, Lancaster County, it's 133 feet long. And question number three, what are some parts of the bridge's design that have been added since they were built in the 1800s? Reflective stripes on the entry and paved ground surfaces, surface, 
air conditioning and lighting systems. Well, we don't have air conditioning in our in the bridges. Um, so that that is out. Stone half walls leading up to the entry and aluminum railings and wooden support beams and red paint. Hmm. Well, what I see in all of the photographs here that I don't, I don't think they would have been there back in the 1800s would be the reflective stripes. Let's take a look at our bonus sources. Okay, we've already watched the video, so let's look at the Carlin Bridge, Carlin Park covered bridge. This is actually not in Pennsylvania, it's in Dayton, Ohio. We also have the Big Darby Creek covered bridge. This is not in Pennsylvania as well. It is in Union County, Ohio. Let's go back to our articles and take a look at our second article. We're going to learn about why bridges were covered in Pennsylvania. Why? What's the purpose of covering the bridge? In the 1800s, there was a great need for bridges because of Pennsylvania's many rivers and creeks. Farmers needed to move their produce, and travelers needed to move west. They could transport by ferry, or they could build bridges. There was certainly enough timber here to build them of wood, but wood rods. So the logical thing for Louis Vernvog, Theodore Burr, Menander Wood, and the other bridge designers to do was to cover their bridges to slow down the rotting process. So that makes sense. Wood rots. So the top of the bridge is what's going to be seeing the elements. The roof will be getting the rain and the snow and the ice and everything where the bottom of the bridge is covered. So the, I'll call it the road, the wood on the bottom is less likely to rot because of the cover, um, the roof being able to protect the bottom. We've already seen two of the bonus sources, the Carlin Park cover bridge and the Big Darby Creek uh, covered bridge. So we're going to look at this rotting log. So the rot with the log, that's what would happen to the bottom of the bridge if it was exposed to those elements. So by putting the roof on the bridge, we're able to protect the bottom of the bridge. So when the roof rots, you would only have to replace the roof, not the bottom. And then we have Asylum Township here, and this photograph is, it is beautiful. This is a beautiful photograph of Pennsylvania. You could see the rolling hills. We have the river here, farmland. This photograph tell, really lets us know how beautiful our state is and how special our state is. Let's answer the questions below. The, oh, this is the uh, Susquehanna River in Pennsylvania. Where is this river and township located? It tells us right here, we are in Pennsylvania. What do people use the river for? To water crops, to generate electricity, transportation, or beauty? And if you look, what is surrounding the river here? The crops. They're gonna use the, water, the river to water the crops. And our last question, what are some physical characteristics of the river in the picture? very shallow with stagnant non-moving water that kind of like a pond where the water is still doesn't move very wide and shaped like a circle narrow banks with slow moving water or deep and wide with large waves well large waves i'm thinking the ocean and and there's not usually large waves within a river so i'm going to get rid of this answer as my choice and I'm going to get rid of the stagnant, the non-moving water because a river flows. So we have two options here. Let's go up to the top, take a look at our photograph. Well, the river doesn't really look like it's shaped like a circle. This actually looks like a backwards S coming through. Narrow banks with slow moving water. Don't forget to log into Your Studies Weekly if you want to earn your Rev Coins for our work today. I hope you have a good week and I'll see you next time.